it's Yvonne again from Enjoy Your Life Coaching and Healing with the second part to how I quit some of my bad habits. So in the last video you would have heard that for about seven years I tried to quit smoking. Now there are, if you watch the video you know there's two things wrong with that because trying doesn't exist. Watch the video if you don't understand that. And the other thing is I tried to quit. So moving away from something is always a lot harder than moving towards something. Moving towards something gives you much more motivation and inspiration. So in hindsight, I know now that I was trying to, I was becoming smoke free instead of trying to quit. So that is a part of how you talk to yourself, what your mindset is, and it will help you so much with achieving whatever it is that you want to achieve. It doesn't have to be getting rid of a bad habit or reducing the money you spend on a bad habit, but becoming financially stress-free and having a, a very good mindset, money mindset, those two are good things, right? A good mindset financially will reduce your stress automatically and by reducing your stress about your finances you're probably reducing your bad habits already. Bad habits are things that relieve stress I think and if you have less stress there's less need for you to have or start or continue a bad habit. So that's something to think about as well, right? So now that, I, now that we know that we have to have a towards um, mindset, a towards goal, um, we talked about reducing the amount because the towards is being smoke free and the steps on the way to being smoke free, smoke free, drug free, alcohol free, whatever, free, uh, the steps on your journey towards that is to reduce it's to reduce your stress, reduce your intake, reduce the money that you spend on that, reduce the amount that you spend doing the bad habit, that kind of stuff. So it's reducing. By becoming aware, you will automatically reduce whatever it is you're trying to quit, right? I know the words are not matching up, but we'll get there in the end. So you want to be smoke free, do all those little steps on your journey and when I was doing it I was actually really enjoying some of those things. One of the things I did was I stopped smoking inside and I made sure that whoever I was living with or whoever uh, was coming to visit or wherever I was visiting nobody was smoking inside anywhere. I told them that I was quitting smoking and I wanted to be smoke free. So one of the strategies that I Im implemented was to not smoke indoors whatsoever. And you'd be surprised if you talk about that particular thing or one particular strategy that you're implementing or even your big long term goal to be smoke free. You have so much support from anybody around you. It's absolutely amazing. You should give it a go and, and try it because I think it was also because I said I don't want to smoke inside because I'm reducing the amount I'm smoking and that made me feel proud of myself for standing up for myself looking after myself and talking about it because that's important and I didn't feel guilty either because if I wouldn't have said anything and my friend would start smoking, either my house would smell of smoke and I'd be like, oh God, <laughs> I want one or oh my God, it smells. And um, if I were somewhere else, if they were smoking in their own house, I would want one as well. And if I'd have one, you know, if I'd give in, then I would feel guilty afterwards. So communicating about it is I think very important yeah and um, when you do it see what support you're getting because I reckon it will be quite good it will be what you didn't expect basically so um, stop smoking inside 
and stop smoking inside the car because I, I remember one time um, you know those push buttons that um, you push them in and then they go hot and you can take it out and you can light your cigarette well that almost went wrong one time because it's really hard to keep your eyes on the road and and look at this to try and light something in front of you. it's really hard so it was it was time to give up smoking in the car which I did and I was very happy I did too because it's a very small area and even with the windows open you can the whole car smells and your clothes smell your hair smell everything smells it's yeah so great I think they were great ideas and I think they're really good stepping stones starting points to stop indoors in the car just don't anyway for smoking as well what I did is I reduced the first cigarette I had in the morning I didn't smoke the first cigarette in the morning which saved me I think a couple of hours by that stage and I didn't take the last one at night either so that takes a lot of willpower to start doing this but once you're aware like oh I'm gonna go to bed um, I'm gonna get ready and turn off this turn off that blah, blah. I'll just go outside and have another cigarette then you're like oh hang on no I won't so when did I actually have my last one? Is that half an hour ago? An hour ago? Well, if I don't have this one, then the length of time between my last one and my next one in the morning is going to be longer. And we already know from um, certain cultures that there's a lot of fasting, even in religions, they do fasting. So obviously, back in the old days, people knew that fasting was healthy for your body so this can be a fast if you stop taking the last one at night and, and don't have the first one in the morning um obviously obviously you're sleeping so you're eight to six to eight hours say eight hours sleep you're already not doing your bad habit you're not smoking you're not drinking you're not doing drugs you're not gambling right so that's eight hours now take away the last one at night and the first one in the morning you might end up with 10 hours or maybe even 12 hours imagine what your body can do in that time because every time you're sleeping all your cells regenerate I'm not sure about all the time frames but I know that certain organs in your body like the whole organ will be renewed will have completely brand new cells in two days other organs the bigger organs it will take I think six weeks is the maximum for completely new organ to be there basically so I'm not up to that so don't quote me on that but if you're interested in how quickly they regenerate just look up um, specialists reports and they will tell you how quickly all your cells rejuvenate so overnight when you sleep most of this rejuvenation process takes place and the less toxins are in your body the less toxins your body needs to fight before it can start rejuvenating so why not not have that last one drink smoke whatever just seriously give your body the break that it deserves because it is the vessel that carries your soul around for this whole lifetime you know the your body rejuvenates at night when you sleep give it the extra space before and after as well and if you find it hard not to have the first one in the morning because you're having for example a coffee don't have that coffee have a glass of water you will it, it will just help so much and your body will really appreciate it because all at once really after fasting the whole night is water in the morning because there's a lot of water within your body I believe it's about 70% so it's it's really handy to make that gap longer 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 and that's one of the things that I really enjoyed and for I think about half a year I smoked one cigarette a day and it took a while to get there but when I was on the one cigarette a day and that's what I was doing for a long time then I was thinking okay do I want to have it now no I'll wait till later because so and so is coming around and maybe we'll have one together and then I can have one together with that person so that you know the peer pressure the social side of things so yeah and then that person came around and we 
stayed inside so we didn't smoke and that person left and I hadn't had one so I can remember that I was living in a house and it had a beautiful porch at the front it had a wee bench on the porch as well so before going to sleep about I think it varied obviously but um, most of the time I think it was in the evening I would just sit down outside it'd be nice and quiet no phone no radio no TV no nothing just me being outdoors in the fresh air I think it might not have been winter <laughs> and I would have my one cigarette a day and that to me was not pain it was more pleasure and I felt really good because I hadn't smoked all day I only have that one cigarette and for such an extent extended period of time yeah that's definitely something to be proud of even though I hadn't quit I hadn't stopped smoking I wasn't smoke free I was very impressed with myself that I only had one a day so we've already talked about smoke not smoking indoors not smoking inside your car another thing of that's a given really but I see it still regularly don't smoke around children because they pretend to be adults in some of their games and they may pretend to be a smoker or a drinker or something it, yeah it's just better not to do any bad habits around children and of course it's hard but if you've if you're used to it or if you've grown up with it it's hard but it's something that it's it's really good to think about it put it in your mind um, they are the future children are the future so it's it's yeah it's just important that they don't feel all the bad habits or even if you feel guilty about doing your bad habit they pick up on those feelings everybody picks up on everybody's feelings that's why a lot of people smoke drugs and drink because they don't want to they don't know how to deal with it that sort of stuff anyway that's another video <laughs> so um no smoking indoors no smoking in your car no smoking around children um, change your friends change the change your social groups change your venue your meeting places that sort of stuff we already talked about in the other video also um, stop some other vices like if you're trying to give up smoking and you usually smoke when you drink then stop drinking for a while three months would be really good um, if you are smoking with drinking coffee try to not drink coffee have something else instead you know that, that sort of stuff so you have to quit some other vices what I did with what happened for me because I didn't do it it actually happened is I stopped drinking white wine and I stopped smoking drugs and that made it really easy for me to quit smoking a little bit later on so it does help I know now from experience and hindsight it does help to stop other vices as well when I quit I actually stopped drinking I stopped drinking either two or three months and then I had either one or two drinks no more until I was certain that I didn't get the urge to have a cigarette so that's how I did it when I actually quit so um, if you are aware of all your bad habits all your vices then think of how they are interlinked and what you need to do to give up which one whichever one you want to give up unless you want to give all of them up in the same time but um i don't know how stressful that would be for me it was a gradual process and i was quite happy with the gradual process so bearing in mind that i tried to quit smoking for seven years right <laughs> anyway so become aware of your habits become aware of all your vices everything and see how they're interlinked and start working on them then there are things that you can do things that you can have etc to help you reduce the amount so for smoking there are nicotine plasters nicotine plasters you just stick mainly on your arm I think and um, you gotta find out which one is the right one for you the ones that I used there were three different levels and because I was already smoking a lot less than uh, I was uh, when I was 
uh, when I was 19, 20, something like that, when I was a student, uh, I was wondering why I went to the shop and bought three packets of 25 cigarettes at any time. And I did that every two days. So <laughs> I was smoking way too much. <laughs> and I remember in between classes, we had to move from one room to another room to join another class. I was the first one out and the last one in because I had to have a cigarette in between. And if I had enough time, I'd have one and I'd light the next one with that one. And then, oh my God, I'm so glad those days are over. <laughs> anyway, so there are plasters. Um, if in your country they are not free or they're too expensive or whatever, there's a, a couple of things I want to talk about. I filed my nails because I don't have a like I don't like having a cigarette out of my mouth because the smoke gets in my eyes. I don't like that. Plus, when you're looking down, the smoke does go up past your eyes. You're filing your nails. You, you use both hands. Can't smoke. Very handy. I filed my nails a lot. Then when I was going out, if I were to drink a fizzy drink, I would feel like I wanted a cigarette. So for a while, I started drinking something else. I drank. I was still drinking alcohol then because I quit smoking before I quit drinking. So I, drank, I moved my drink from fizzy with alcohol. I moved it to milk with alcohol. It was Kahlua at the time. So, uh, I don't know if you've ever tried that. <laughs> if you, <laughs> you should actually give this a go because it's have a glass, just a wee glass, have a glass of milk, you know, just sip on it, just drink it, blah, blah, blah. And then try and have a cigarette at the same time. Oh my God. I thought it was disgusting. So <laughs> whenever I drank Kahlua milk or milk, then I wouldn't want to smoke because I remembered the painful experience, not the pleasurable experience of how bad it made my mouth taste. <laughs> so definitely try that. Filing your nails and having milk for even at home or in a bar, whatever you like, just to reduce the amount that you smoke. So with implementing these little tips, having the fast and making that fasting time bigger and bigger and bigger and reducing the amount that you smoke anyway, like during the day or when you go out. Um, it's basically helping your body cope with sleeping. You rejuvenate every cell, your body regenerates itself and less toxins, less smoking, less alcohol, less drugs, less whatever is bad for you, um, junk food or overeating or anything like that. They're all bad habits, really. Um, the better your body is able to rejuvenate itself and you will get a healthier body and you will feel better. When you feel better, you actually don't, you actually want to be better. You don't want to stick with those habits. So again, it's moving forward without having to do much about it. So awareness is one of the big things here, again. <laughs> um, the uh, main thing for me was when I quit, or when I was still uh, in the process of stopping, the main thing was that I couldn't drink alcohol because for me, alcohol and smoking cigarettes went together because I was out every night having a party, having a good time. <laughs> at least I thought so at the time. <laughs> I'm actually having a much better time these days, but that's all good. Um, it's just a period that you go through and that's fine by me. You know, it's, it's not wasted time. I had a good time and it's, there's been lots and lots of lessons. So for me, I had to remove the trigger. So I drank less. And once I finally woke up and went like, that's it. I'm not smoking anymore. That's when I stopped drinking. I stopped drinking because that was my trigger. I knew that if I were to drink several alcoholic beverages, that I would lose the control, which is in my mind, and I would want to smoke. So no drinking for me. That's all good. You know, it's whatever your trigger is, do it. Make sure you reduce it and then you'll reduce the rest of your habits as well. The more you love your body, the more your body will love you.
the more your body loves you, the more you will love your body. It's, it's basically whatever I've just said and whatever I said in the previous, the last night's video, that is what it comes down to, really. Yeah, you got to look after your body. And the best way to look after your body is not to put any toxins in it. Um, it's less stressful for your body. It's great. You will thank yourself for it later. I am. <laughs> um, then as a parting thought, I would like you to think about what is best for you. Because there's two strategies here and one works for one and one works for the other one. When you quit, you can either have a supply there because it will give you less stress knowing that if you need one, not if you want one, if you need one, you can have it. It's there. It's not in plain sight. It's, you know, somewhere in a cupboard hidden away. But for example, a drink or cigarettes, they are there if you need them. Because um, if you're a person that feels really stressed about, oh, I need to give up health scare or whatever i need to give up then it's probably easier if you have something there for you so you're more relaxed you don't have to go out and buy it first before you can have your vice another one is get rid of everything if you're drinking get rid of any alcohol and um get rid of the glasses that you use for it that sort of stuff if you're smoking get rid of lighters, tobacco, papers, filters, cigarettes, every, ashtrays, everything. I actually kept one ashtray outside <laughs> for guests just in case they wanted to. And I still have one because there's one guest that comes here every once in a while, not very often, and unfortunately he smokes, so outside. Um, so have a supply and it might give you less stress, or have nothing in the house and I'll give you less temptation. It's up to you. Everybody's an individual. It's whatever works for you works. And whatever works, I'm very happy for you. And I'm very grateful that you've been watching these videos because it's they're all full of little tips. And some resonate, some don't. So hopefully some have resonated and some have made you way more aware of everything that you're doing in daily life and you might think you only have two bad habits you might smoke um, cigarettes and you might drink alcohol but when you look at it when you become aware of it your triggers they may be the bad habit have a look at that yeah and then I thought don't ever give up giving up really don't give up doing it don't give up on your journey because it may look like the top of the mountain and it's such a big mountain to climb but really once you've quit smoking once you are smoke free it is such a blessing it's well worth it and to be honest it's actually easier than you thought it was going to be and that is true that's i heard that from everybody around me oh and i was wondering stressing out about uh all the whole journey before i quit smoking etc so for some people cold turkey works really good because then they don't have all the worries all the speculation uh what if what's going to happen blah, blah 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 so quit and that's it done i'm a non-smoker now or an ex-smoker now whatever you want to call yourself so and um there's a saying nobody likes a quitter yeah but these days not many people like a smoker either anyway i hope you have found this interesting to say the least <laughs> so um have a look at all my other videos there's a playlist about recovery from this eases and bad habits comes under that as well because your body will be more healthy afterwards as will be your mind so all these things they were the recovery playlist is mentally physically emotionally and spiritually you know better recovering from wherever you were all right so have a look at the recovery playlist have a look at the money vlog as well because obviously if you quit smoking and quit drinking oh my god the amount of money that you will save that's actually another thing have a look at in your daily life have a look at how much you actually spend and write that write it down every single time you spend money on your vice 
label device whatever it is and then underneath put all the amounts with the dates and that might be an eye-opener just like for me when I was really young um, 18 19 20 when I was buying those three packets every other day that was an eye-opener I was like where's my money <laughs> so I have a have a look at the rest of my videos on my money vlog and whichever other videos that you want to watch there's plenty of them now there's more than a hundred on my channel so have a look have a giggle and catch some tips about all sorts of stuff this was Ivana from enjoy your life coaching and healing and that's exactly what you're gonna do now you're gonna heal yourself you've been coached so now you can coach yourself and you're gonna enjoy your life if you implement implement all these things <laughs> best of luck and if you get stuck send me an email can always help you know all right take care